Welcome. In this video, I'm going to debrief the Nearpod presentation that you guys did last time. Uh, I want to go through the answers uh, to the questions because I'm, I'm kind of having a hard time getting individualized, meaningful feedback to you quickly. So um, at least if I go through all, all the answers, you'll know what the right answers should have been. Um, before I get into it, I want to apologize if you hear chirping in the background. It's springtime at the Hyatt House, and uh, our baby chicks and ducks are pretty vocal early in the morning. So, uh, number one, temperature changes in the system indicate changes in energy. Uh, a lot of you said heat here. Uh, remember, heat is when energy is transferred from one one thing to another. So, it's, heat is a form of energy, so energy is a more right answer uh, than was heat. Um, number two, uh, system gains energy. That means systems coming, uh, energy is coming into the system. So that's an endothermic reaction. Uh, an energy change in which the system loses energy uh, is described as an exothermic reaction. Energy is exiting the system, so it's exothermic. Uh, evaporating liquid water, uh, think about what's going on with the energy as water goes from liquid to gas. So think about what's happening with the charged particles uh, as we go from liquid to gas. Um, so uh, number four, the answer is endothermic. Evaporating water is endothermic because energy is coming into the system. We're going from liquid water to gas, so gas moves around much faster than does liquid, so energy must be coming into the system, so that must make it an endothermic reaction. Freezing water is the exact opposite logic. So we've got liquid uh, water, and we're slowing it down. We're uh, having it move less, uh, so we're condensing, that's the other word I was looking for, we're condensing it, squeezing it together. Uh, so freezing water, we're going to be taking energy out of the system, so that's going to be an exothermic reaction. Uh, number six, uh, when a chemical reaction occurs, the energy of the system um, in an exothermic reaction, the energy in the system decreases because we've lost energy. Um, for, I'm going to skip ahead to number eight because I want to show the, the diagrams on, um, on the same video that I show my work on number 10. So I apologize about that. That will be kind of clunky. Uh, but here is number eight. Particles in a warmer body have greater kinetic energy than those in a cooler body. I kind of mentioned that a few minutes ago. Uh, if you warm things up, they start moving around faster and faster and faster. Think about, uh, I, did a, I did this with you guys at one point in class where I was talking about how solids just kind of vibrate and then liquids move around a little bit more and then gases go crazy. So th that think about what uh, temperature change accompanies those changes. You know, pretty cool, a little bit warmer, a lot. So we've got a lot of energy um, in the gaseous phase. So hopefully that uh, that makes sense. I've got one more that I'll do on this video, and then I'll switch so that you can look at my work uh, for 7 and 10. Uh, but this last question, um, hopefully you've seen enthalpy. Hopefully enthalpy makes sense. That's definitely a, a kind of an upper-level idea. Um, but the the base level that we need to understand isn't crazy hard. Um, exothermic reactions, we've got heat leaving the system, so if heat is leaving the system, our delta H should be negative. If heat's entering the system, our delta H should be positive. So uh, delta H is enthalpy, so the correct answer here in an exothermic reaction, the, the sign is negative because heat is leaving the system. So that'll be the end of this video. Look for the second video that has the ones that I want you to see the work on. Um, and then go from there.